Ditto has always had an extremely interesting and fun niche in competitive Pokemon. Since the introduction of its imposter ability in Gen 5, which stops the need to use the move Transform, Little Jelly has gotten its time to shine. Ditto is most commonly used with Choice Scarf to copy and then outspeed opposing attackers and is a great answer to hyper-offensive teams. You also get the opportunity to scout exactly what sets your opponent's using, but with Abysmal Bulk, it's a pretty niche Pokemon that doesn't have a lot of usage, but more often than not, it can actually make some pretty crazy stuff happen. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a crazy good match for you. This one is actually against a fellow Wi-Fi battling YouTuber, Just Weavile. He's my good buddy. His link is in the description. Go check out his channel if you're into that type of thing. And we always have really good games. This time, it looks like he has an especially scary team, but I, however, have a ditto on my side. So let's go ahead and get into the game. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and we do appreciate it. And you know what our little fella Ditto appreciates, and that is being a lead. Because they lead off with the Vicavolt, I toss out the little Jelly, and we are going to turn directly into them. So, what that does is, lets us get a little peek under the hood and kind of see what this Vicavolt's working with. So now that I am him, I can see its moveset, and it is going to be a Sticky Web variant. So I'm thinking, hey, I could actually go for some of those as well. I go for the Sticky Web, as of course I am faster, as I'm a Choice Scarf Ditto. So, I figure if they're going to be Sticky Web lead, and I don't have any way to remove that, I'm just going to basically get Sticky Web myself, and then now that's going to kind of level the playing field a little bit. So, of course, being Choice Scarf into that sticky web is not where we want to be. But Ditto did exactly what we needed it to do. We tuck him in the old back pocket for later. As I'm actually just going to end up going into my real Vicavolt. So, a little Vicavolt on Vicavolt violence here. They do go for the energy ball. Uh, mine is a little bit different, however. This thing is actually Choice Specs. And it's mostly going to be a kind of a slow pivot. But... Uh, I figure I'm just going to go right for the Bug Buzz here. I can get some decent damage off on theirs. No, then I'm Specs. And it turns out they are going to be Focus Ash as kind of just a dedicated Sticky Web lead. So the good thing about the chip on their Vicavolt is mostly just that I have pretty much anything can outspeed it. So it's going to be easy to take care of later on, whether or not I get up Stealth Rock. So uh, they actually go for the Volt Switch pivot of their own. And that's going to end up bringing in the absolute iced out menace that is Alolan Ninetales. Look, any time going up against Alolan Ninetales, especially when you have a team that doesn't have the biggest of threats on it, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle in terms of damage. Because this thing is generally going to come in here. It's going to be the Light Clay item, which is going to increase the amount of turns Aurora Veil vale is able to stay up. So they are going to be able to grab basically a free light screen and reflect with that Aurora Veil. Vale. But I'm thinking, hey, you know what? I could actually go for that. It's a little bit of that action as well. So I'm going to end up going into Ditto once again and turn into them. Now, the reason for this is because uh, I basically know that they don't have the offensive power to kill an Alolan Ninetales by themselves. And I can essentially just try to copy their Aurora Veil. Vale. Look, the Ditto in this match is playing an especially interesting kind of role. Ordinarily, Ditto is supposed to be here for kind of an offensive revenge killer presence, but it actually works really well as being able to kind of copy some of their support. So I'm able to peek at their moveset, and I'm just going to go for the Aurora Veil of my own. Uh, now, the fact that I'm playing Ditto a bit differently in this match is a bit unfortunate because being Choice Scarf, you know, obviously uh, I'm going to be locked into that Aurora Veil, but I figure if I want to have any type of... Uh, defensive presence. I do have to get this Aurora Veil up. And now we've matched both their Sticky Web and their Aurora Veil, and I don't have either of those on my team, so that's why we love to see the Ditto. Uh, anyway, I'm going to end up switching as they go back into their own Vicavolt, and I really do not want to take an Electric Attack, so what I'm going to do is just go into the Alolan Dug Trio. I'm coming in, Luscious Hair, the locks are flowing, and we're feeling good. As I get caught in the Sticky Web, but everything else being in Sticky Web, sticky web is going to kind of even the playing field. Plus, I'm a pretty quick little uh, little set of hot dogs here. So, some hairy hot dogs are now in a position where I'm behind the Aurora Veil. Knowing I can take an attack from this thing, I'm actually going to go for the Swords Dance. Because I figure, literally, this thing kind of needs all the help it can get. And uh, I know that I'm going to take, like, about half from an Energy Ball. So, that does not do a whole lot of damage. But at this point, I can just outspeed the Vicavolt. Even taking Sticky Web, I'm actually just still faster because Vicavolt, for whatever reason, is about slow as hell. So we give him head three times, which does finish this bad boy off. And that's a, a decent threat out of the way. So now they get a Revenge Switch. And there's one Pokemon on their team that is a bit unfortunate, especially considering the amount of damage that I've already taken. We're not in a great spot against Priority. And that is going to come in the form of the Rillaboom. So look, Rillaboom has a very unique kind of niche competitively where... With the Grassy Surge up, they can go for the Grassy Glide, which is a priority move, plus the stab, plus the damage from the Grassy Terrain. It is honestly an absolute menace to take care of. Rillaboom is a pretty wild competitive Pokemon right now, as I don't really want to kind of let the Dug Trio go down here. I know that a Grassy Glide is going to finish me off, but my plan is to, if anything has to deal with this, I'm thinking potentially Mightyena comes in and is able to take two with the Aurora Veil. 
However, I take one nicely and I'm like, okay, sweet. I get some, some health back from the old grass, but my Aurora Veil does go away. And that is because with my Ditto using it, I only got five turns because I'm not holding the Light Clay, unlike their Alolan Ninetales. So unfortunately, another glassy, grassy glide is gonna be enough to finish me off. And that is honestly insane stab damage. And there's not a whole lot on my team that wants to deal with this thing, but uh, luckily Mightyena going down is kind of one of the, the mons I would have designated to uh, kind of be a sack in this match. So what that does is allows me a free switch into the Vikavolt. Now Vikavolt is one of the only Pokemon that can take a grassy glide relatively well, and I can hit something pretty hard with a bug buzz in return. So they are gonna switch out back into the Alolan Ninetales. That's mostly just because their Aurora Veil, I believe goes away next turn and they wanna be able to set that back up. So uh, my offensive power is really, really whittled down with this team, especially because uh, of this Aurora Veil. But I go for the bug buzz. Uh, an ideal play probably would have been to go for the Thunderbolt. However, uh, the, the Rillaboom was honestly such a big threat to me at this point that I couldn't really risk it staying in. So. Uh, I take some, I get some pretty decent damage off on that thing, at least a little bit of chip, and at this point, uh, it's kind of guaranteed they're going to get back up that Aurora Veil, and it is really tough uh, to, to go one for one with the Aurora Veils, but if there's anybody that can do it, it's our little pal Jelly here, I bring in the Ditto once again, uh, we get caught up in some webs, and we just turn back into them, so I still figure that I can have at least a bit of momentum, or kind of match their momentum if I can get Aurora Veil up on my side, uh, I do still kind of have a little bit, they have the upper hand considering they get it for much longer than I do, but... Uh, if I want to have any type of type of chance in this, I do need to kind of match that Aurora Veil. So, uh, of course, there's not really much that I can do to hit them that hard, and I know that they can't hit me, so essentially I just get a free Aurora Veil as well. And I'm doing basically everything I can to try to stay in the match at this point. So, they're going to end up going into the Mag Cargo on the Switch, and this is an extremely interesting Pokemon, especially for their team composition. This thing behind the Aurora Veil is actually in a pretty great spot defensively to take attacks and potentially set, set up some Shell Smashes. So... Uh, at least I get that Veil up, which is going to kind of dampen their offensive power at this point. And now I have to make a play. I'm going to end up going into the Bruxish. Now the reason is, I'm likely expecting them to go for either a Flamethrower or some type of Shell Smash. And Bruxish should be able to take an attack from this thing behind the Veil. So, uh, I come in, I'm floating high as shit, but I still touch the Sticky Web somehow. And this thing straight up launches a Shadow Ball at me, which is super effective. And somehow, I'm able to live it with 1 HP. And I'm thinking... This little fella is not what it looks like here. It turns out this is actually going to be the Hisuian Zorark instead. And that is why they're able to outspeed me and finish me with a Shadow Ball. So that is unfortunate. The main reason why is because I was trying to take advantage of the fact that Bruxish has the ability to break their Aurora Veil with the Psychic Fang. So unfortunately, I've been got on the Hisuian Zorark disguise there. And now essentially, I'm going to end up going back into the Vikavolt once again. I know that I should potentially be able to take an attack from this thing. I am going to be max HP. So I can fire off the Specs Volt switch. It's going to do a lot to whatever. They actually do end up switching out, which is amazing. So I can try to grab a bit of momentum here. As at least we are slowly trying to get rid of these uh, Aurora Veil turns. As, of course, back comes in the Ninetales. And I would love to have st uh, Stealth Rock up at this point. The rocks would honestly make such a difference. But I haven't really had an opportunity to bring in my only Stealth Rocker, which is coming in the form of Sandy Gas. So not super reliable. But uh, I get some good chip off on the Ninetales. And now I can at least go into whatever I want and try to make it play. And that is going to come in bringing back in the dogs. We got the dogs out on a sunny day. It's snowing, and it's overall a weird time out here. Honestly, what makes it weirder, anytime you bring in a lowland drug trio, it just makes anything weirder. And uh, I'm just going to go for the Iron Head here. I should be able to take a freeze drive from them, no problem. And at least the Iron Head should finish this thing off. And now I don't have to worry about them having uh, the, def the defensive pressure with that Aurora Veil. So the Iron Head does knock it out. Down goes the Ninetales, and we are very happy to see that thing gone. As I get hit with a little bit of a Life Orb recoil, and their Aurora Veil does actually go away right at the right time. Now, this is going to set up a pretty unique opportunity for him to go into the Mag Cargo. So, this is a matchup where generally this thing is going to go for the Shell Smash here. I'm honestly not concerned about it, because I do have uh, the trick up my sleeve in the form of a Slimy Boy in the back. So, uh, they actually do end up going for the Terra. I'm thinking this thing always is going to be something like Terra Water. Turns out... Uh, it is going to be the Terra Grass here, so while I am going to be able to Earthquake, uh, that's a good defensive Terra there, as of course, with Sheldon's uh, thickness, he's able to take that real nicely. And that also is going to activate the weak armor with the cost of a defense drop and a speed boost. Now, this thing is going to be able to set up, set up a Shell Smash and be the fastest snail on this side of the Mississippi. So that is exactly uh, what this thing is going to do. So it got the weak armor, it got the Shell Smash, but considering this thing did go for that Terra Grass, I have the perfect answer in the back 
in the form of Ditto here. This is exactly why uh, Ditto can fit on your team. It's a great revenge switch and it's able to stop sweeps like this. So this thing has all sorts of special attack and speed right now. And considering we both have the sticky web up with me being choice scarf, I should be able to outspeed. So Ditto comes in. I'm gonna be like, hey, uh, I, like, I like what you're going on over here. I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to that real quick as I get caught up in some web, but the imposter is going to turn me into them, but also uh, going to copy their stat boost here. So. I say, hey, I appreciate you setting that up for me, brother. I'm able to now go for the flamethrower, outspeed, and their grass type snail ass is gonna go down. So now, Mad Cargo, or at least my Ditto, is in a position to where I'm the fastest thing on either side of the field, and I have the stat boost. So it's looking like I may actually be able to turn the sweep around, especially because their Aurora Veil does wear off. So now they get a free switch, they're gonna end up going into the Rillaboom once again. So this thing comes in, it is going to activate that grassy surge, which sets up the grassy terrain, and while it is going to boost the damage of their Grassy Glide, a, I should be able to take one of them. Their highest damage should be about 80% uh, on the Mag Cargo here, and I can essentially finish them off with a Flamethrower. They go for the Grassy Glide, and it actually ends up knocking me out. Now the reason, the only way that Rillaboom is able to knock me out here is with a Choice Band. So the banded Rillaboom with the greatest priority move of all time has just enough damage to knock out the Ditto and the game has definitely flipped. I was feeling pretty confident in being able to take a, a glide from that thing, but something to consider is also that I did copy their uh, defensive drop when they, they got that weak armor. So here, I'm gonna go back into the Vicavolt. This is the best answer for the Rillaboom. It's the only Mon that can take an attack here likely. And I really wanna predict the Great Tusk to come in, which is why I hover over the Energy Ball, but it doesn't seem worth it to me to go for that over prediction. So they do actually end up going into the Great Tusk, sadly. Um, but a Bug Buzz is going to be a two hit KO on this thing. I figure a Bug Buzz is likely a two hit KO anyway. Uh, I do get the special defense drop to just lock that in. And the unfortunate part about not going for that energy ball is that now I am essentially forced to take an attack from this thing as they go for the knockoff, gets rid of the choice specs, but also is going to essentially allow the Rillaboom to be able to knock me out. But the reason why it's not that huge deal is because they do still have the Hisui and Zoroark in the back as uh, that thing is actually gonna end up coming in right here. So Hisui and Zoroark, of course, is gonna be faster. Um, the boy is just speedy as hell. And I am down to my two Pokemon. They have the two left. All I have left is the Sandy Ghast. Uh, so at this point, Hisui and Zoroark is definitely going to be able to outspeed me here as I am kind of up against the wall a little bit. I, uh, there's nothing I can essentially do. This thing just throws some balls at my face and down goes the Vicavolt. And my last Pokemon is going to be the Sandy Ghast. So I still have not committed my Terra at this point. Uh, unfortunately, however, this thing is going to be the Water Terra. So Sandy Ghast, while I know I should be able to at least take an attack from the Hisui and Zorark, I am going to have to commit my Water Terra uh, just so that I'm not weak to it. However, this is going to be a max defense Sandy Ghast, so I do not deal with special attacks super well. And all I can really do here is go for the Earth Power, knowing that it's a freaking... Of course, it's a normal and ghost type, so I can't go for that Shadow Ball, but... I do commit that Water Terra as I don't really have really any other option at this point, nothing to lose. They do go for that Shadow Ball, which is going to be able to do over half and gonna be a two hit KO. So while I do get to throw some pocket sand in their eyes, it is a two hit KO on their end, but another Shadow Ball does finish off the Sandy Ghast and that is essentially going to be the end of the game. There was all sorts of illusions and transforming going on in this game and I thought it was a really fun match. I was seriously so, I was one choice band away from being able to finish off the, or pull off the reverse sweep uh, with the ditto in the form of Mag Cargo, which was honestly pretty insane. But regardless, still a really good match. Anytime me and the boy Jack play, we always have really good games. And that was definitely a really fun one. Let me guys know what you thought. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. I do appreciate all the support on these. And as always, I will see you guys again soon. Hey, if you've made it all the way into the end of the video, go ahead and comment Little Jelly for me.